that uh, we're in the realm in which uh, we need to be thinking spiritually. Jesus is saying, hey, the end time is going to come through the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And we need to be thinking in terms of that. Now, Jeremiah says we need to walk in the ancient ways. There are ancient paths that we need to walk in. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. Okay, Jeremiah 6, verse 16. This is what the Lord says. Stand by the way and see and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it. Okay, so what we see here, there are ancient ways and we're going to talk about these ancient ways and ancient things that we need to walk in. That's what, what Jeremiah is saying. There are some things that already exist out there and we need to walk in those things. And I don't think satellites were well, what he was referring to. He's talking about <laughs> ancient, ancient things. And so I want to talk about where the glory is poured out and how the glory is poured out. And we see from Deuteronomy uh, 28 that the glory is poured out when we're obedient Hallelujah. to what God is saying. L listen to these verses. Deuteronomy 28. From what, verse 1. From verse 1. And then verse 12. And then verse 12. Now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments, which I am commanding you today, that the Lord your God will put you on high above all the nations of the earth, and all of these blessings will come upon you and reach you, if you obey the Lord your God. So it's about obedience. The glory is going to be poured out when we're obedient to what the Lord is telling us. And then okay. verse 12, the Lord will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens. Oh, we're talking about open Hallelujah. heavens. We're talking about open heavens here. If we're obedient. Now, who is the obedient one? Well, it's Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Because what happens and I'm going to ask you to read uh, out of Matthew, uh, Matthew 3, 16, uh, when he was baptized in water. Uh, and this is after he came to John the Baptist. John the Baptist uh, uh, baptized him in water. And then what happened? <clears throat> after he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and settling on him. So here in Deuteronomy, it says out of obedience. If you're obedient, the storehouse of heaven, though it's going to be open, open heaven. Isaiah talks about open heavens, rend the heavens and, and come down. And, and Malachi talks about uh, open windows of, of heaven and pour out blessings that you cannot contain. So all of that was fulfilled there in Jesus mm. Uh, because the heavens were open. Hallelujah. That, uh, that's exciting. Now, not only that, but in uh, John chapter 1, verse 51, Jesus said something else about these open heavens. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Okay, so what happens on the uh, with an open heaven? Well, uh, the angels are coming down and they're going back up and they're bringing down blessings and they're taking up requests and and so you just see the blessings being poured out in these open heavens okay now i'm going to get some practical uh applications of this message and what you can take home with you from it Hallelujah. And, and, and there's really two things and one is that you can have an open heaven over your home See, the Lord said years ago that Sherry and I have an open heaven over our house. Well, we developed it. We established it and not even knowing, but by the Holy Spirit, we found out. And, and I'm saying that uh, with this message, that an application of it is you can have an open heaven. There's a lot of people that have a lot of chaos in their house, but you can have an open heaven over your house. And we're going to uh, talk about that later and you'll see it from the from the scriptures, but one of the things is about obedience. Another uh, application is that Sherry and I have gone and we have sought uh, open heavens and we've uh, traveled 
uh, around the world, and we've we've looked for open heavens. We found them. God has shown us things, sent us places to open heavens, and and we'll talk about that. And and so we have had some impartations into our life, uh, a lot of different ways, but including uh, under these open heavens. And so uh, we're going to do some imparting. This is the second. Mm -hmm practical application of this message we're going to do some imparting into your lives uh tonight uh because you can have uh whatever we've received we freely give uh, you. to you if Thank you, you re if you believe and so we're laying some foundation here uh, and uh what i want you to see there are special places on the earth just like jeremiah find these ancient paths and, and walk in them because that's good and, and there are special times mm -hmm. that, that we can go into the presence god has appointed times for us to come into his presence and, and those times uh, are spelled out in the bible and we're just going mm -hmm. to be talking about these things we're going to be talking about uh, to receive the glory there are special places and special uh, times that you can receive the glory uh, from god and what God said to us uh, recently was that there are portals where God has opened up uh, between ga gates and doorways to heaven and uh, where man can walk where man has not walked before. And, and it's between heaven and earth. Uh, and these are gateways. And in that, he called it the glory zone. Well, we had we here yeah. with that term, but this is what God said. And so what we're going to teach you tonight and talk about tonight are some things that God has taught us in our life, uh, and, and it's important. And as a result of that, uh, we've been able to walk in the glory zone. It's a, it's a realm that a lot of people don't even, uh, cannot even comprehend. But you can see there from John 17 that Jesus said that's the way the world's going to believe. It's by the glory. It's not just by having... Uh, more satellites in the sky and mm -hmm. more pamphlets and putting out more uh, brochures and mm -hmm. books and all of that. It's about the glory. So this is a very important uh, message. And I want to say that there are special places and special times. And that's what we're going to look at next, special places. And uh, well, let's just think, first of all, about Jacob in uh, uh, Genesis 20, 28. And Jacob was running from his brother Esau who wanted to kill him. And, and he got to a place where he was tired one night and he laid his head on a rock and he, and he had a dream. And so let's see what he saw in the, in the dream. Sherry, would you read this? Okay, Genesis 28. And he dreamed and behold, the ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. And behold, the Lord stood above it. This is the gate of heaven. Okay, so it's a gate. It's an open door or a gate or a window or a portal uh, into the heavens. It's a place where if you're there, it's easy for you to hear the voice of God and to see visions and have angelic visitations. visitations. And, uh, and these are very important. And, and there are places all over the earth uh, that are like that, and and um, Sherry and I really didn't know anything to, about this until one time the Lord took us uh, one place. Yes, I'll, yes. I'll just briefly explain this. Uh, wasn't that He sent us there? He took us, a and uh, we had been ministering in uh, Savannah, uh, which is about four hours away from uh, our home in Athens. We were coming back, to, going across to the country, and uh, just on what would be a straight road, uh, and uh, here I am uh, on Sherry's driving, and I'm on the passenger seat in the passenger seat asleep. Asleep, and, and uh, so tell us about what. Just like next. Jesus in the boat. <laughs> no, he was asleep, and I was I was tired. I wanted to get home. He wanted to go down a new road. Uh, he likes new roads, and <laughs> and all I could think about was getting back to my house and being able to to settle in and relax. Well, I come to a four-way stop and on the right-hand side of the road, there was a sign that said Kettle Creek Battlefield. And uh, 
And so I, I ignored that because Brother Fred loves battlefields. And so I just ignored that sign and he was sound asleep. So I was just going to uh, just quickly get through that four-way <laughs> stop and, and head on home. And when I started uh, to move from that stop sign, the car itself, not me, turned to the right. And Brother Fred woke up and he said, where are we going? And then I had to tell him about the battlefield. Okay, so and that's where we went. So we went to the battlefield, which is way out in the woods. And what the Lord showed us in that, it was a portal. And his glory had been poured out. His energy had been poured out. And he said, as long as people didn't reject it, then it was still there. And that's what we experienced it. <clears throat> and, so, our, and our cell phones went back an hour. Uh, and so what I, I want to explain today are just things that the Lord has shown us about the glory. This is the great awakening. This is what's going to happen in the great awakening for the world to believe. Amen. The, the glory has to be poured out, and and you are a carrier of that glory, and that makes Hallelujah. you a revival agent. When you carry when you carry that glory. What is the glory? What's the presence of the Holy Spirit Amen. and fire? And, and and don't think it's a cold water. I mean, it's fire. <clears throat> and, and so here we were at, at this place, and he said it was a portal. We didn't know anything about portals. But we experienced the glory. He said, the glory is here. It's been poured out. The energy's here. And it, uh, and it remains here until it's rejected. And because it was out in the woods, uh, no one had rejected it. No one had gone down there and rejected it. But the people uh, who had been at that place uh, recognized it was a very uh, powerful place. And so they created a, 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 a cemetery there. there. And, and all of those people wanted to be buried in that place. And so even though they were, even though they may have uh, lived on another 10, 20, 30, 40 years, uh, they wanted to be buried at that place. And so we, we saw uh, those uh, graves. We looked at the grave uh, stones and all. And, and uh, these were, some of them were 40 years after, the, after that time after had, the battle. had 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 happened and so what i want you to see from here how do we know where the portals are they are places where god's glory is poured out where there's a, a, a an open door between earth and heaven and you, you'll recognize it because of the energy and the glory that's there now even the, the native americans uh recognize these places and and they built things they built uh, they considered mm -hmm. it to be places of, of worship they were, and God said to us that they recognized the greater one above them. There is no other God than our God. And so they recognized him. They may not have called him by our name. They may not have had those kinds of relationships, but they knew something was important there and they established a, a place of worship there. Now, the, the enemy also knows where some of these places are and he's tried to cap them off and, and, and seal them up. And seal them up. And, and so the Lord has sent us to places to reopen uh, where the portals are, where his energy has been poured out, where there's, where you can go in that area and you, it's easy for you to hear heaven, uh, the voice of heaven, and it's here, easy for your um, uh, prayers to be heard. And so you want to go into those areas and receive it. But even if you haven't gone to any of those places, Sherry and I are going to impart to you before this message is over with, uh, because whatever we've received, we freely give. <clears throat> So there are special places and special times. The first type of special place I've talked about are these places where there are open heavens or open windows of heaven or I call them portals. And the next place is what is called uh, digging the wells and redigging the wells. See where people have gone and uh, they've been fervent in serving the Lord in prayer and, and they uh, symbolizing digging wells. But uh, the well, of course, gets down to the, it goes down deep to where the uh, water is, and the water is a type of the Holy Spirit. So you do this in the spiritual realm. But we'll start with uh, uh, Isaac, who redug the mm -hmm. wells that his father dug. See, Abraham had dug several wells and found water at all those places. And uh, so Isaac came along and started redigging those wells. So these are another, these are another type of special places 
that you can go and receive the energy and uh, glory of God. And, and I want uh, Sherry to read uh, here from uh, Genesis 26, if you would, please. And he went up from here, from there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night. So he built an altar there <laughs> and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug a well. Okay, so th this is talking about redigging wells. And uh, he went to Beersheba, which means a well of seven or well of oaths. And, and so it's, it's a, a place. Covenant. It's a covenant. It's a play, an important place. And so this is something that Abraham established with God. That's what he called it, the well of the covenant or the oath. Uh, and so the Philistines didn't like those wells. You know, it's mm -hmm. interesting to me. They didn't, they didn't even want the water. They mm -hmm. filled up all of those wells that Abraham had dug. But uh, Isaac came along and he re-dug them. And then the People uh, contended with him and fought with him, but he went out to a place where God gave him a broad place and there was no mm -hmm. more contention, no more strife. And, and he dug, redug the well there that Abraham and God appeared to him. Okay, so uh, that's just a symbol of what goes on today where people have gone uh, someplace and they have fervently prayed and, and uh, the spirit of God is poured out. Uh, and, and like that's the Water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And, and so that's like somebody has dug a well. And then over time, maybe that dug well has been filled up, filled up with, uh, with dirt. And so you can go back to those places. And a good example of that is Azusa Street. Yeah. Uh, Azusa Street uh, is where the Pentecostal outpouring occurred uh, in the early 1900s. And of course, that building's not there anymore. But William Seymour was the man that, uh, that led that. And there's a great uh, revival. And as a matter of fact, it was a Pentecostal revival that spread across the world mm -hmm. from that one little spot, just a, a mission house. And, and that building's gone, but the place is still there. Yeah, and, God, right. and God wanted us, uh, Sherry and I, to go there. We went there. And he said he would impart some things to us. We stood there in the very spot where, where that uh, mission had stood and God imparted things into our lives. And so we well, have imparted. He, he said, you will carry revival wherever you go. From that, from that, that place. Moment on, from yes. that moment on. So we, we received some things. See, remember Jeremiah said, go to these ancient places. Go to these places where God's glory has been paid, uh, poured out. And, and you can still receive it. Uh, there's still residuals there. And, and unless there's a rejection to it, God said it's mm -hmm. still there. We've seen it very active and been very active in our lives. We've sought these places out. And, and you might think this message is different. Uh, this message is not just about teaching, uh, but it's talking about the glory and how you can participate in the glory, how you can actually mm -hmm. walk under a uh, open heaven. See, Jesus opened up the heavens, but through his obedience, what no one else could do, he was obedient to what God had said, and he opened up heaven, and now the heavens are open over him, and Jesus is in you. So you have an open heaven in you, and we're going to talk about how, how do you open these heavens up, and you need an open heaven over your house, and, and I had a prophetic <laughs> word personally for me to go uh, to a waterfall, and so I have, uh, and sit there by the waterfall and the Lord would speak to me. And so I've gone there and I've done that repeatedly and I've communed with the Lord there in that place. And so I've created on your rock a, a place where there's an open heaven over a rock by a waterfall. And I go there and sit uh, and, and the Lord talks to me every time. And I have questions. And when I have those questions, I can go and sit on my rock mm -hmm. and, and under that open heaven, uh, because I've had a prophetic word uh, that helped me and I acted on it. I, it was a call, a prophetic call to action. And I did what the prophetic call of action uh, said to do. So I did that. And now there's an open heaven over that place. And it's very easy for me to communicate and commune with the Lord at that spot. And I, I make it a priority. And I, I try to walk 
uh, at least five or six days uh, out of the week and go there and, and sit on that rock and commune with the Lord. Um, there may be some times when I'm traveling and not able to do it, but if I can, I go there and I sit on that rock and I commune with, it's an open heaven. And, and, and that's just the way that we've made an open heaven over our home where there have been people that have been saved, healed, delivered, and it's very easy to and get Elizabeth's miracle. Uh, it's been a... very easy to get people healed and delivered here in, in our home uh, because there's an open heaven there, and there's there's nothing. Uh, the devil hasn't been able to stop it up. We continue to walk in that. It's just out of obedience to the Lord, and we carry Christ within us, Jesus Christ within us, and there is an over open heaven over Him, so you can. Uh, establish your own open heaven in your home, but it's going to be by, by prayer and by believing and understanding. See, if you don't understand these concepts, uh, you won't have it. And if you don't act on it, if you don't speak it out, you won't have it. But what we're telling you tonight that you can have it, an open heaven over your home where people can be born again, where they can be healed and delivered and miracles Amen. occur in your home because of your obedience uh, to open up heaven, uh, and, and we've given you some examples of that. Now, Sherry mm -hmm. may have something to say. Well, I just wanted you to tell me about Mark, um, Mount Carmel. Well, Elijah. Uh, okay. The so, Lord was showing us some things. Uh, this week. Okay, so remember when, and we've talked about this before, and you remember the verses about Elijah. Uh, he had a contest or showdown with the, uh, the false prophets, and um, all hundreds of them he took them up on there on the mountain brought up the people so he was a revival agent elijah was a revival agent and he went someplace that was important he went someplace where there was already an altar mm. where people had been worshiping god now i couldn't tell you who who those people were and it doesn't matter who they were there was already a portal opened up well uh, he didn't open up the first one now the the devil may have uh, closed it up and it may have been stopped but there was already a, a portal there and, and that uh in this showdown with those false uh, prophets and, and the people were all there and the, he was going to turn the hearts of the people uh to whatever god uh rained down fire brought down fire and so elijah re-established that altar so he opened up the portal he prayed and the fire came down and the hearts of the people, people Turn to back, God. Turn back to God. That's how important it is. To, That's revival. To establish these ancient uh, portals and, and go to these ancient places and paths. That's what Jeremiah talks about. And that's what Elijah did. He carried revival. He changed the hearts of a nation, of the people in a nation. It's amazing what he did. But he went back to a place that had already been established as a place of worship for the Lord. It had already opened up uh, a portal there. And, and now uh, people tell me there's still an open portal over Mark, uh, Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very important. Now I've talked about special places. Now let's move to special times. <laughs> now, there are special times and God has appointed special times that you are to come into his presence. And these are perpetual. That, that means they just last. Uh, they go on and on. And uh, I want you to read from Leviticus 23, because here there are seven appointed times for people to come into the presence of God. And that, so there's special places uh, you can go. Leviticus 23. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> the Lord spoke again to Moses, saying, speak to the sons of Israel. And say to them, the Lord's appointed times, which you shall proclaim as holy convocations, these are my appointed times. Oh, don't, don't you want to go up to his appointed times? Appointed they're appointed places, they're appointed times. And, the, and of course, there were seven feasts he's talking about there, and the Bible has other feasts. The next feast coming up on the Jewish calendar is uh, March the 7th. And that's uh, March 6th and 7th. And, so Purin. Okay. So Feast of Purin. And so it's a time to uh, purify. purify. So we, we may talk about that later, but 
you can look at Jewish calendars and find out when those feasts are. Those are appointed time. God said these are always going to exist. And you might say, well, but we're in the New Testament. That's Old Testament. But I want you to think that Jesus was crucified mm -hmm. at Passover. And then they had to take down his body because there's a holy day coming up. And that was the day of unleavened bread, the feast of unleavened bread, which was about to start. Now, what's symbolic of the unleavened bread is there was not, nothing natural going to raise him from the dead. Oh, hallelujah. Nothing natural going to oh, raise good. him from the dead. That's the, that's the unleavened bread. Uh, oh, glory to God, because he is the bread of life. And, and he didn't have anything in him naturally that would raise him from the dead. But there was, oh, glory to God, on another feast day, on the feast of first fruits, uh, he came up out of, yeah, out, came out, of, out, of the out of the grave. And remember, hallelujah, hallelujah. 50 days later. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Again, you think about Brother Pentecost. 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 Okay, so you might say, well, uh, but but that was Old Testament. But here it is. We're going to find it in Acts, the, in the book of Acts. Something happened <laughs> on the appointed day. On the appointed oh, day. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus had already been crucified. He'd already been buried. He'd already been raised uh, from He'd the dead. He'd ascended. already ascended. Uh, uh, to heaven, and this is his disciples, like you and me, and they are observing a feast day, an appointed time, and I'm going to ask you to read out of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a noise like a violent rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> And tongues that looked like fire appeared to them and upon them, distributing themselves and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with different tongues as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out. This, Hallelujah. This is New Testament. This is Book of Acts. Hallelujah. Book of Acts, New Testament. And the disciples of Jesus Christ, after he's ascended on high, and they're, they are observing an appointed time to be with the Lord. And they were there in unity. They were in agreement. And, and the fire fell. Well, there were thousands of people. Thousands of people say that very day. Um, that was an appointed day to be with the Lord. So what I'm saying now, and I'm bringing it to closure and conclusion, that... Uh, there are special places and special times uh, where you can appear before God. You can receive the glory. And it's going to be the glory that brings the great awakening. Don't think that it's just going to be by more pamphlets sent out there, more books or more. More, more media coverage. Or more meetings. It's not about that. It's about the glory. The world will believe when they see the glory we, moving in our midst. Oh, hallelujah. Very, moving in you, hallelujah. So the two applications I, I talked about today that you could take from this message, and there's so much more that God has downloaded on us, to us, and that we want to share with you. But this is where I'm going to stop tonight and say that you can prepare an open heaven over your home. And, and and I encourage you to do that. And I've talked about ways that you mm -hmm. can do it with prayer and believing. And you have to have this basic understanding and knowledge of this and how important it is that this is the great awakening. And uh, and then also I said, we're going to impart before this is over with uh, to you what we receive because we have gone to special places and special times and participated in special uh, places and times and we've received and uh, we've received mantles and anointing and we want to we, you know, impart into you what we've Hallelujah. received okay sure Hallelujah. i'm going to turn it over to you well you know this this is the uh an important time for all of us uh the 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 lord has um shared with us and we've um just recommitted and um received uh, revival uh, within ourselves and um, revival in our bodies and in our minds and and um, because we we know that there is like sister Rebecca said there's so much more that God has 
for us who are carrying revival within us, who carry the glory of God wherever we go. And uh, and so uh, we, we hope that you've been encouraged tonight and also have been stirred in your innermost being uh, to, to go to these places and to, to observe uh, the, the fellowship time uh, you know, the feast times are not religious. Um, um, they don't have to be. They, 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 they don't have to be religious, but they they certainly can be where you come to be with the Lord and fellowship with him and commune with him and receive from him. And that is so. Uh, and so that is the, you know, revival is the pouring out of his glory, just like it has been on these college campuses. We just found out, I just found out today that um, Texas A&M uh, is one of those campuses where revival has, has started. And that gives me so much joy because that's where our granddaughter, Annabelle, will be going next year is Texas A&M. And, uh, and, but the revival has started there. And uh, it is just a, um, just an exciting time uh, to be with the Lord. And so I'm going to open up the floor. Well, I want to say one other thing, and, and that is you might say, well, this has nothing to do with me. But, you know, Revelation, the book of Revelation says, behold, uh, Jesus stands at the, at the door, door and knocks. knocks. And if you open unto him, he will have feast with you. And you can either go to his house or you can go to, he'll come into your house. You know, that's what Enoch, what happened.